Now at six, authorities in Jasper County investigate an early morning shooting that left one man dead. Plus, Arves makes a grant donation to a volunteer ride program in Southwest Missouri and an Oklahoma Route 66 Association has concerns about a proposal that could change part of the iconic road. That story coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Driving near Miami, you may have seen a part of Route 66 called Ribbon Road, but a proposal to repair that piece of the iconic highway has some people concerned. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Tanya Bach. KOAM Samantha Walker explains. In the future, you'd drive by it and it, it really wouldn't stand out as anything but just a regular old road in the middle of the country, and that, that's what we're trying to avoid. The historic Route 66 spans more than 2,000 miles across the country. But a three-mile stretch in Ottawa County that is only nine feet wide, called the Ribbon Road, is causing debates. Uh, and we were concerned with the fact that the plan that uh, was selected for the road involved destroying what's left and basically recreating it, uh, putting a replica in place where this original pavement has sat for over 100 years. While the road is officially in Ottawa County, there are multiple agencies involved in the discussions, including the association, Miami City and Ottawa County officials, and the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. Um, so there's been different views on how that should be preserved. Um, our view as a city is to preserve it as is and keep those original pieces of the ribbon road. Um, milling them we feels like kills them. The last proposal regarding repairs to Ribbon Road was released in February and still included the prospect of milling and relaying the road. The Oklahoma Route 66 Association released a petition online to urge officials to work on patching and preserving the road rather than replicating it. We absolutely would like to see it repaired so that, you know, the, the bumps and bruises this road has over the last uh, 100 plus years, it, it, it's earned those. It should be able to keep those. Miami Mayor Bless Parker says the public response to the proposal about Ribbon Road has not gone unnoticed. Because there is so much um, going on right now with emails, with phone calls, um, and a lot of people are getting these. So I think they're gonna, they've decided to bring everybody back to the table again to make sure we get this right. Reporting in Ottawa County, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Miami officials say they have another meeting scheduled to discuss the future of Ribbon Road. When we visited Ribbon Road today, we noticed it looked different than it did last week. And as you can see, the road is now covered with dirt and gravel and little pavement is visible. Miami officials say they were unaware of the work being done, but hope it is dirt laid down to help preserve the road as the proposal is discussed. We reached out to an official with the Oklahoma Department of Transportation to confirm what work is being done, and we have not received a response. We also reached out to the District 3 Commissioner who's handling the proposal. His office told us he was unavailable all week. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us with a first look at weather. All right, so we had uh, showers. We got thunderstorms in here last night and then into the morning hours and a few isolated ones out there right now. Temperatures still pretty good. 60 in Joplin, 59 in Pittsburgh, but we are really going to cool off. We have a cold front that is slicing right through southwestern Missouri into northeastern parts of Oklahoma. So behind it, the winds are really going to get moving. So right now we have westerly winds sustained 15 to 20 upwards of 25 miles per hour, and those will get moving a little bit more for us tonight. All the heavy rain over the past several hours uh, really from Springfield East, but with our cold front, we are getting some isolated little showers and a couple rumbles of thunder as these continue to push into southwestern Missouri as we go through the evening hours. Not a huge deal, but a few out there. Temps will drop back through the 50s, 40s, all the way down to freezing later on tonight. So much colder ahead. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. The Kansas State Fire Marshal says a second person has died from last week's apartment fire in Chanute. Officials say 90-year-old Joe LaVon Haymaker died from severe injuries in the hospital on Saturday. Haymaker is the second victim of Thursday's Cornerstone apartment fire. Now, the first is 22-year-old Kaylin Jones, who was found dead at the scene. Seven other residents of the building were injured but have since been released from the hospital. The fire marshal also determined the cause of the fire to be accidental, saying it started due to carelessly discarded smoking materials on a balcony. 
Jasper County Sheriff's Department responds to reports of a shooting just before 10 this morning and hillbilly pumping and hauling on North Schifferdecker. Authorities say a disturbance was also reported. Sheriff's Department confirms one person, Travis Wyrick of Joplin, has died. The next of kin has been notified. No arrests have been made, but authorities are investigating witnesses. Today, the Arvest Foundation granted $25,000 to the new community ride system in southwest Missouri. The Economic Security Corporation began CARS, or Community Action Ride System, in response to the loss of the trolley system in the area. This program will serve Barton, Jasper, Newton, and McDonald counties in Missouri. Volunteer drivers are encouraged to participate. You know, there's a ton of organizations in the Joplin area and in Newton County and in all these areas, there's a ton of organizations. We really like to find those organizations that are reaching far, right? So the ones that are making a difference, like we heard Kavanaugh say, in all of the counties she listed. You know, this is one of those that's going to touch a lot of lives um, and, and provide access to a service that we've been without now for a year and a half. Um, the program is set to launch in May, but the community is invited out to a free event on April 13th revolving around this new program. For information, including signing up for the service or volunteering to drive, you can head over to our website, koamnewsnow.com. You might see a lot more skateboards at Missouri Southern. The university today hosted a first drop-in to celebrate the new on-campus skate ramp. MSSU alumnus Nathan Bemo founded the American Ramp Company and wanted to give back to his alma mater. So he, his company built the ramp. And if you're a skateboarder, it's like you're kind of choosing between, you know, Missouri Southern and, and a different university. It's like, well, I skateboard, might as well have a ramp right by my dorm room, you know. Uh, so if that kind of pushes over the edge for, you know, uh, kids to come every year here as opposed to somewhere else, that's a, that's a win for everybody. The ramp is located by McCormick Residence Hall. One area softball team puts up 14 runs in its first two games of the season. John has more on the secrets to Labette County's success coming up later in sports. But first, election officials want to remind voters against electioneering at polling sites. We're going to tell you what that means and why you can't do it. Ahead of Missouri's municipal elections next week, the Jasper County Clerk wanted to remind voters to avoid electioneering. KOEM's Amber Jenkins has more. According to Missouri State Statute, electioneering is not allowed within 25 feet of polling sites, meaning no clothing, buttons, or signs that promote a political candidate or stance. We actually do have a list of all these polling locations, whether they allow signs on their property or not. If they don't, then that means no signs, no handing out literature, no getting signatures for initiative petitions on their property uh, at all. If you happen to be wearing a shirt that breaks electioneering rules, poll workers will ask you to change or turn your shirt inside out. Jasper County Clerk Charlie Davis says these rules don't just apply on what's on that day's ballot. But one of the other things that people don't think about is uh, electioneering might not be just for this election. This is an April municipal election, so if there are people that are coming up uh, on the ballot in August or November, that covers those as well. Davis says the goal is to make voting more pleasant. To barrage them with a bunch of signs and literature while you're standing in line uh, to vote kind of gets a little bit frustrating. Reporting in Jasper County, Amber Jenkins, KOAM News. Now, Missouri's municipal election date is April 2nd. There are items on the ballot in all southwest Missouri counties. There's also an election in Oklahoma on that day. A little later, the Jayhawk women have a tournament tip-off against USC tonight. John has a preview of the matchup coming up in sports. Plus, we still have some scattered thunderstorms out there. We're going to look at that coming up. Home of Connect to Culture and Spiva Center for the Arts. Well, of course, uh, we had some rain across the region kind of uh, picking up for us yesterday, and then we had the heaviest rain last night through the morning, and then on and off scattered showers, even a few thunderstorms for us today. Officially at the airport, a quarter of an inch of rain today for the month, 1.71 inches, but again for the year, 
little bit behind. We're behind by about an inch and a quarter. Outside, here's our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam. Cold front is rolling through right now. You can see the camera is shaking. The winds are picking up and the winds are going to continue to increase as we go through the evening hours. So you have a southeasterly wind in Missouri, then a westerly wind once you get into Kansas and also Oklahoma. So that front right across extreme western Missouri and temperatures will start to really cool down behind it. We'll drop back through the 50s, 40s near freezing later on tonight. Isolated thunderstorm or shower or two over the next few hours. You can see this little line right where the front is. Very small little guys, not a big deal. All the heavy rain has mainly been off toward our east, but we do have some spotty showers kind of popping up right along that front. These are going to roll east over the next couple hours and be out of here uh, by eight or nine o'clock. Look at the snow on the backside, the colder air in Nebraska through central western parts of Kansas. So we are entering the dry slot of the storm system and our temperatures are really going to cool off. Still 64 in KC, but look at Wichita 33, 27 in Dodge City. North Platte is sitting at 24 degrees. So that colder air is going to be working in. The winds are really picking up as well. We're getting some pretty good wind gusts out across Kansas into Oklahoma and those gusts will stay between 20 and 30 miles per hour through the overnight hours tonight and then slowly decrease as we go through the daytime hours for us tomorrow. And of course, with temperatures cooling off and it's windy, you get low wind chill factors. It's going to feel about 20 by morning, so you'll have to bundle up heading out the door during the morning hours for us tomorrow. All right, let me walk you through time. Any showers that do pop up, gone over the next couple hours. Then we have mostly cloudy skies, some snow skirts just to our north. We drop back near freezing tonight. Mostly cloudy skies for us tomorrow. Only near 40 by noon. We only get up to about 46, 47, maybe 48 degrees. Tomorrow night, the winds will diminish. We'll drop back to the dew point, meaning a very thick frost. And we drop back 26, 27, 28 degrees. So a pretty good freeze by Wednesday morning. Then Wednesday, clouds will increase throughout the day. Could get a spotty shower late in the day. High temps better as we go into the mid 50s for afternoon highs. All right, your day planner for you on your Tuesday, 34 in the morning, 39 by noon. High temp of only 47 degrees, but it gets better. Once we get into Thursday, 60s return. Once we get into Friday, 70s return. So we're warming up as we head toward the holiday weekend. 47 tomorrow, 55 on your Wednesday, 64 on Thursday, 74 on Friday, upper 70s for Easter, but we are going to get some rain chances increasing Easter into early next week. All right. Well, we'll probably need some rain, rain chances, but we will. Yes, need a little bit every now and then. Yes, we do. We'll take it. All right. Thanks, Doug. Well, the Missouri Department of Conservation wants to remind people to leave wild baby animals alone. Chances are if you encounter a wild baby animal in its natural setting, the parent is not too far away. And while the inclination is to do a good deed, experts say interacting with the baby animals is one of the worst things people can do. Well, still ahead, Labette County High School softball plays its 2024 season opener. And the NFL approves a new rule that penalizes a specific form of tackling. John Deals has those stories and more up next in sports. Buy with two points. Are you game? I am ready. To take a spin on the Wheel of Fortune. Labette County softball is off to a hot start to its 2024 season. After the first week of games, the Lady Grizzlies are 2-0 with 14 run victories in each of their first two games, both of which were on the road. Today, Levette plays its first home game of the season. The Lady Grizzlies host Columbus. Now that one got started at 4.30, just wrapping up now. Columbus softball is also 2-0 to begin its season. The Lady Titans dominated both ends of a doubleheader against Prairie View. That was on Thursday. We'll have the highlights from this one tonight at 9 and 10. Well, we're two-thirds of the way through the 2023-24 sports season in the MIAA. Pittsburgh State, Missouri Southern, all the rest of the conference's member schools have completed the fall and winter sports seasons. The MIAA announces today its updated standings for the 23-24 Commissioner's Cup. Now, every year this award is given to the school who performs the best across the board. 
in conference play for every sport. Pittsburgh State is in first place entering the spring sports season. That means the Gorillas have overall been the top performing athletic department in the MIAA. The award gets presented at the end of all spring sports. March Madness has given us quite a few memories in just the first weekend. The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament continues today. Now starting with Oklahoma, the Lady Sooners in the second round of the tournament against Indiana on the road in Bloomington tonight. Game just got started just over an hour ago. The Sooners eked out a three-point win over Florida Gulf Coast in the first round. Winner of this game faces one seed South Carolina on Friday. Meanwhile, Kansas women's basketball also plays in the round of 32 tonight. Very late start. Jayhawks face USC in Los Angeles. The game is scheduled to tip off at 9 p.m. If KU wins, it advances to the Sweet 16 to face fellow Big 12 foe Baylor. That would be on Saturday night. The Jayhawks have split their two games against the Lady Bears this year. Well, the NFL Owners and Competition Committee meets today and approves a proposal that all but ensures more penalties in 2024. According to NFL Network, the league unanimously decides to ban what is known as the swivel hip drop tackle. This means players will receive a 15 yard penalty if they grab a ball carrier with both hands and quote, unweight themselves by swiveling and dropping their hips and or lower body landing on and trapping the runner's legs at or below the knee. Now NFL competition Committee Chairman Rich McKay says the swivel technique doesn't get used very often, but when it is used, it causes a lot of injuries to the runners. NFL Executive Vice President Troy Vincent said last week this play is likely to be enforced similar to the helmet tackling rule. It not only results in a 15-yard penalty, but also warning letters and fines to offenders. That's a look at sports. We'll be back after this. Here a flower, there a Britain consent. We are proud to salute John Hoagland, a four state hero. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. A Joplin murder suspect makes his first court appearance in that case. Plus, uterine cancer is now the deadliest reproductive disease facing women. We're going to look at who may be most at risk. And as shoplifting becomes more of a problem in New York City, we learn how the reselling of those goods is creating a shadow economy. Those stories and a lot more tonight on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. Well, one in seven people face hunger in the Ozarks, and that's why Ozarks Food Harvest is thankful for an annual special Easter time donation today. Opal Foods out of Neosho donated more than 200,000 eggs to the charity. Fresh eggs are one of the most requested items from the food bank because they have high protein content, nutrition, and versatility. Ozarks Food Harvest says it's difficult to get protein-dense foods, and this donation will be a huge help. Storing is not the issue, and distributing is really not the issue. A lot of these eggs will be out by the end of this week, um, before Good Friday even. So it takes a lot of food to feed a third of the state, which is what Ozarks Food Harvest does. We're thrilled for this and they're going to be on tables by the end of this week. Opal Foods has been making this donation since 2008, just in time for Easter. Yep. Final check of the weather. Well, it's going to cool down for us tonight. Uh, still some scattered showers over the next uh, couple hours and then down to freezing. Only 47 tomorrow, but 28 tomorrow night. So a hard freeze back to 55 on Wednesday. But heading into the holiday weekend, we do warm well into the 70s once again. All right. Thanks for watching. We're going to see you right back here at 10 and let's make it a great evening and an even better tomorrow. Captioning.